Hello everybody. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. I hope that you are having a good week working on your English, working on your goals, and improving your life a little bit each and every day. That's what we do here on my channel, Pensando Inglés. If you do not already know me, my name is Kyle. If you don't already know me, very nice to meet you. It's a pleasure to be on your screen, your screen right now. And for those of you who are my loyal followers and watch all my videos, my friends, welcome back. I thank you once again for spending your time working on your goals with me, your friend in the US. So guys, what I like to do on this channel is make content like this, where I speak clearly a little bit slower than normal to help intermediate English learners improve their listening so that one day they can speak and have real conversations with native speakers, okay? Because once you understand everything you're hearing, then you can start to have output, okay? First, input, input through your eyes and your ears, later, output through your mouth, okay? So, I make videos intermediate level English about themes that I believe will help you to be smarter, wiser, and just know more interesting things. Be a more interesting person, okay? Because part of this channel is just me as a person trying to better myself and at the same time trying to help you guys better yourselves, all right? We, ha we like to have a lot of positivity here in this community. So today we're going to talk about a man who had a huge impact on history, particularly in his country, India, and this man changed the future of his people. He never fired a gun. He never threw a punch. He did it with love. Who am I talking about? Mohandas Gandhi. Okay? Now maybe you guys have heard this guy called Mahatma Gandhi. I thought that that was his real name before I read this book, Mahatma Gandhi, because everywhere you see online, they call him Mahatma, Mahatma Gandhi. His real name is Mohandas but in his native language, Mahatma means spiritual one or an enlightened person, okay? It's almost like a Buddha or a Messiah. Uh, so it's a man who is enlightened, okay? A man who is spiritually connected. So the people thought of him as more than just a man, okay? He was a spiritual leader. And guys, I bought this book a long time ago, probably two years ago. and. It sat on my bookshelf. I read other books, other books, other books. Finally, the other day, I was thinking, I need to buy a new book because I don't have anything to read. But first, let me go look at my books and make sure that I've read all the good ones out of there that I want to. And Mr. Mohandas was staring at me like, read me. So I said, si, senor, I'm going to read you. So guys, I, I read this book. I finished it probably a week ago. I was moved in a lot of ways from this book. I'm going to share a little summary of his life, the things that he did in his country. I'm going to share some awesome quotes from him, and I'm going to share some cool facts about him. But uh, first, I just want to share a couple of little things that maybe you guys will think are weird, but really struck me from this, from this book. So he's, he is an it perhaps was thought of as almost a perfect man, okay? You know, sometimes people get get an image of famous people in their minds that they don't do anything wrong, that they're more than just a normal person. But Gandhi made a lot of mistakes. And when he made mistakes, he admitted to them. He tried his best to fix them. He never pretended to be perfect. He was completely secure and confident about his imperfection. Uh, he had dentures, which are fake teeth. Sometimes when people get older, they get their teeth pulled out and then get fake teeth. Fake teeth and put those in. Those are called dentures. He would take his dentures out and clean them in public in front of people. He was not ashamed of being a perfectly imperfect human. Uh, one example of a mistake he made that was quoted in this book. At the place where he taught people, it's called an, uh, an ashram, it's like a place where yogis go to meditate and spiritual things, like a spiritual place, right? 
So he had young men and women there trying to improve themselves and follow his ideas. But he had an issue there. Women kept getting sexually harassed by the boys because a lot of them were teenagers. And uh, he wanted to try and solve that problem. So instead of, I don't know, smacking the boys around and be like, I told you, don't touch those women. If you do, you're leaving. Instead of doing something like that, he took the girls and zzz, shaved their heads. He shaved their hair off because he thought that that would make them unattractive to the men. That's kind of mean, Gandhi. That's kind of mean, bro. But that was very early uh, when he was still trying to figure things out. I don't think this Gandhi would have done that. That was young man Gandhi. But anyway, that's one thing that really struck me about him is uh, he admits his flaws. He does not pretend to be perfect. Another little thing that struck me was just a little scene from this. A scene from the book that I get in my head. All right, and it, there's maybe no lesson to this, but for me it struck me. It, it touched me a little bit. So he got arrested a lot of times, guys. He spent years in prison because he was an activist trying to fight peacefully uh, for India's rights and freedom from Britain. So they were always arresting him. Always arresting him because he was always protesting and things like that. Um, so one time the police arrested him, but when they let him out of jail, they did not give him his clothes back. So he was in underwear, just underwear. And it was storming outside, freezing rain, cold, nasty. And they threw him outside. He had nowhere to go. So he sat down and he meditated. And I don't know why that, that strikes me, guys. It was just, now when I meditate, and I sometimes I can't find that calm place, I'll see Gandhi sitting there in the rain, a huge storm going around him, and he's just perfectly still. And that can help me to quiet myself down and settle into the storm of thoughts, because imagine what he was facing then. And if he could sit there and be as still as a calm uh, lake, so can I, no matter what I'm dealing with. So that really touched me. I really enjoyed it. Maybe you guys think that's weird. But anyway, here's a little summary of what he did for his country. Mahatma Gandhi played a pivotal role in India's struggle from, for independence from British rule. He led nonviolent movements like the Salt March. I'll tell you guys in a minute what the Salt March was and championed methods of civil disobedience and non-cooperation, encouraging Indians to resist colonial oppression peacefully. Gandhi also worked to promote unity among Hindus and Muslims, because in India, there are two huge religions, okay? There are the Muslims, and then there are also the Hindus, and it's almost 50-50, so it's very difficult to promote unity when those two different religions are at at odds, fighting with one another. He also wanted to address social injustices like the caste system. Guys, before reading this book, I did not know that there is literally a huge group of people in India known as uh, the untouchables. These are the poorest people. And the Indian people have a caste or a level system ingrained in their minds, in their society, in their DNA. If you are an untouchable, you cannot speak to somebody who has money. You, guys, they won't even let these people look at them. They think that if the shadow, if the shadow from an untouchable touches you, you're cursed. That's messed up. Gandhi tried his best to fix that injustice in the caste system of India. And he tried to advocate for self-reliance. And he symbolized this by the spinning wheel and the use of locally made goods. The spinning wheel is the tool that they use to make clothes, okay? Gandhi wanted every Indian to make their own clothes, okay? He did not want them ordering clothes from Britain or other places in the world. He was trying to make India independent so that it did not need any outside influences. His leadership inspired millions and set a global example for peaceful resistance movements. Okay guys, I said the Salt March earlier. The Salt March, also known as the Dandi March, was a significant act of nonviolent protest 
led by Mahatma Gandhi in 1930. It was part of India's fight for independence from British rule. The march was a direct challenge to the British imposed salt tax, which made it illegal for Indians to produce or sell salt independently. So guys, in the past, all over the world, not just India, salt was a huge thing, okay? It was so important, it was like oil, okay? Like oil or gasoline or electricity today. You know, these things we call commodities and they're very valuable, a lot of money in them. Back then, salt was almost like gold, okay? And there was a law in India that they could not uh, cultivate their own salt from the sea or the earth. They had to pay the British to import salt or to use British salt, okay? Now, Gandhi, to make a point to the British, he decided to openly and publicly disobey that law. Him and his followers, they marched, meaning only walking to the sea, and Gandhi and his followers walked 240 miles. Guys, that's over, a, over 100 kilometers in 24 days. They... They walked to the coastal village of Dandi, where he made salt out of seawater. So all these people walked a hundred and something kilometers, guys, to make salt from the seawater. All you do is take the seawater, boil it, all the water goes away, and you have salt left. Now he went and did that, and he got arrested and went to prison for it. And uh, this act of defiance sparked civil disobedience across India with millions participating in protest against the salt laws and other oppressive policies. So guys, when he did this peaceful thing, he didn't fight anybody. He went, took some water from the sea, boiled it, and made salt. That's all he did. They threw him in prison, but it sparked a revolution, guys, because the rest of the country saw one man, one skinny old man, bravely standing up to the British Empire, and everybody else followed his example. The Salt March highlighted the power of nonviolent resistance and garnered international attentions, significantly advancing India's independence movement. All right, guys, so that was the Salt March. That was super cool. There was one other instance. I don't know if it was the Salt March or a different time when him and his followers protested, but there was one. Oh, I believe it was the Salt March because they were trying to get to the sea and the British officers were waiting at the sea. And if an Indian walked up, they would hit him with a big stick. And Gandhi said, do not fight back. Do not even block. Let them hit you. So guys, imagine just a wave, a wall of Indians just walking into it. Boom, boom. They fall over, another one comes. Boom. They keep on coming and the British guys are just getting tired. <sighs> and they just keep coming. They just keep coming. And Gandhi hated violence. He did not hate the British, he did not hate anybody. One other thing I found very cool is that Gandhi was heavily inspired by the teachings of Jesus Christ. And uh, he truly loved the Sermon on the Mount, which is uh, pretty much the teachings of Jesus in one short speech, okay? The Sermon in the Mount. And uh, Gandhi read that, and a lot of people even claimed that he might have been a secret Christian, okay? But that wasn't true. He just loved Jesus. Uh, he did not convert to Christianity because he did not agree with what the churches were doing because there, he saw corruption in a lot of the churches. So uh, he was not actually a Christian, but he admired and followed the teachings of Jesus Christ very much so. And you could see that by him practicing the teaching of turn the other cheek. He said, do not resist them. That's literally what Jesus said. Do not resist evil. Turn the other cheek. If they hit you once, give them the other cheek and let you hit them again. He practiced these teachings of peace and love, and with it he freed his country. All right, guys, here I've got a couple of quotes, all right? A couple of quotes from Gandhi that I saw online and I thought were beautiful, so I wanted to share with you guys. I'm going to read the quote, and then if, I, if anything comes up that I want to share about the quote, I'll tell you. So he says, It is easy to stand in the crowd but it takes courage to stand alone. So what he was saying, guys, everybody was scared of the British. You know, everybody was fine just doing what the British said. And uh, he had the courage to stand up, not only to stand up, but to do it peacefully. Okay, there were other people that wanted to do it violently, but he did not do that. He wanted to do this peacefully, 
by doing what he thought was right. Uh, Hindus do not believe in violence. They try not even step on bugs. Okay, there are some Hindus that when they walk at night, they cover their mouths and noses so that they will not accidentally inhale a bug and hurt it. That's how peaceful a lot of these people are. Next, a man is but the product of his thoughts, what he thinks he becomes. Okay, guys, that is in every religion. Uh, the old Greek philosophers were saying things like that. As a man thinketh is in the Bible. Um, it all starts with a thought, guys. Everything you see around you was once a thought in somebody's mind. This camera was. So we got to start thinking thoughts of peace, love, and kindness. And then eventually those will manifest themselves in the world through our actions. That's what he was trying to say there. Next. Strength does not come from physical capacity. It comes from an indomitable will. That's true, guys. There are a lot of people who are very big and large, but they are not strong. And there's a lot of small people that are stronger than anybody else. There's a, a saying in English that says, it's not the size of the dog in the fight, but the size of the fight in the dog. Okay? Uh, meaning, it doesn't matter if it's a big dog. What matters is if he has that fight in him. If he has a big, strong heart. If he has the will to keep going. That's what matters. Uh, next. The best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Okay, that is uh, perhaps a Buddhist teaching, okay? That to serve others, to do good for others. And that's also a, a teaching of Christ. He says, what you give to the lowest of you, you give to me. So he says, if you help a poor person or a starving person, you're helping him. Guys, giving is the greatest thing we could do. This one I actually taught my son. If we could change ourselves, the tendencies in the world would also change. If you want to see change in the world, you have to be change in the world. Some kids were being mean to my son at school. Not fighting him or anything, just saying dumb things and he was being sensitive to it. You know, so I couldn't tell him, go punch him. That wouldn't be the right thing to do. If they were trying to hurt him, I would tell him to protect himself, but they were just saying dumb things. So I said, you know what, Connor? A guy named Gandhi a long time ago said, if we want to see change in the world, we have to be change in the world. So if you want more kindness, what do you have to be? He, he thought about it. Hmm. He said, kind? I said, yes, kind. So a couple days later, he said, you know what, Dad? That girl that was being mean to me, we're friends now. She thought that joking around and saying dark things was how you make friends. I told her, no, you have to be kind. And apparently they're friends now, this girl that was being mean to him. I think she probably just has a crush on him because that's what little girls do to the people they like. But uh, I was so proud to hear that he took that teaching that I gave him and he put it into practice and it changed uh, his life. All right, guys, a couple quick facts, then I'm going to wrap this video up. Gandhi was a teenage newlywed. He got married at 13, but he was engaged at 7. This was a marriage that was set up by his parents. In India, arranged marriages are very common. One family will say, my son will marry your daughter when they're of age. So ever since he was 13, he got married. But later, he took a vow of celibacy, which means no sex. So he and his wife, they remained married, but they were not intimate. Two, Gandhi got his start as an activist in South Africa, not in India. So when he was very young, 18 I believe, he went to London to be uh, trained as a lawyer. And then he went back to India after he had his degree and everything. He could not find work there, so he went to South Africa. Apparently there's a huge population of Indians, or at least there were, in South Africa. And that's where he first started practicing law. And when he saw the unfair treatment of the Indians there, he became an activist for their rights in South Africa, not in India. Gandhi was murdered by a fellow Hindu. His religion is Hindu. And this particular young man who was Hindu did not like that Gandhi was trying to bring together Muslims and Hindus. He thought if Gandhi succeeded, then the Hindus would be ruled by the Muslims. So he went to a Gandhi speech. He looked at him in the face, smiled at him and shot him. 
Here we have Gandhi was a man of peace, but never won the Nobel Prize. That's messed up, guys. They've given the Nobel Peace Prize to so many people that don't deserve it, but they didn't give it to the one, one of the greatest peacemakers in history. That's a shame. And the last one, Gandhi was extremely shy as a child. Very quiet kid. He had to learn to become the man that he was. So there's hope for all of us, guys. Maybe you're a little bit shy. Don't give up hope. If you want to change, you can. So guys, I will end this video with one last thing. If you want to see change in the world, you must be change in the world. Okay, mis amigos queridos, muchísimas gracias por ver. Nos vemos pronto.